here we have a number of lengths of ERW 25 by 25 square 1.6 wall or 25 round 1.6 wall waiting to be turned into a space frame. Let the building begin. Firstly I have to take the wooden mock-up off the build table and put it to one side where I can use it for measurements and getting the hang of how it's going together. And so it begins. The first tack is going in place. The piece of framing is sitting up on three points, clamped down at three points to isolate it from the table. The next thing you'll hear will be the happy buzz of the Viper. Okay, there's the floor of the passenger area done of the frame. The engine sits in the left of this picture. I'm now going to go vertical and put on the back and sides. I'm still getting used to this little uh, Viper 120 welder, uh, which is synergistic. So I'm trying to find a setting that gives me flat welds without being so hot they burn up the metal. I can't trust the build table to be flat, so I'm setting this up the old-fashioned way with lots of measuring and using a digital inclinometer and spirit level to make sure that all of my setup is level. I then clamp and I'm putting in tack welding and braces to hold it at the correct angle while I get on with the more extreme work.
the chassis or space frame is just a big bracket that all of the important parts of the car hang off. The diff, the engine, the driver, the suspension. First up, the diff, which is a simple picture frame, although it's made more complicated because the suspension, rear suspension and diff bearings mount to it, which required making crush tubes to weld inside the diff frame. The diff frame is then mounted centrally and becomes a part of the frame towards the rear of the car. The engine is a much heavier object and required a lot more manipulation to line up with the sprockets and diff. The diff is now in place and solidly tapped in. That means the next task is to position the engine. Now, I think the guidelines are that I want the engine as low as I can and also that the chain has to be aligned and it can be has to be in plane uh, in that direction and in that direction and also sideways. Those are the most critical dimensions for the chain. The fore and aft doesn't matter so much because that can be taken up with the chain tensioner at the back. Uh, so aligning it is quite a challenge. I don't want to put any unnecessary strain on the chain, the sprockets, the mounts, or any risk of the chain itself coming off. So currently it's just jury rigged in place with clamps and ratchet straps and I'll wiggle woggle everything until I get it in line and tack some mounts in place. The other chassis members such as the top diagonals will then uh, fit where they may and with luck the exhaust that I've chosen to run under the engine uh, will fit without any further modification. I'll first get it lined up by eye uh, and then lay a straight edge across both sprockets. I can see now it needs to be shifted sideways to the right a few centimetres. Okay, let's sight down a straight edge. mils too far to the right. With the engine roughly positioned using the ratchet straps and crane. I've now put in a cross member which lets me position the engine accurately. I can slide the cross member sideways and back and forth until the sprockets are exactly lined up. In aligning, in aligning the engine with the chain I discovered that this sprocket is leaning off in this direction. Now why would that be? I ask myself between clenched teeth. The carrier is level, zero, zero. I know the holes on the plumber blocks are drilled at the same distance down, so they are level. The only conclusion can be then that the threaded holes in the plumber blocks are not central to the axis of the plumber block. One plumber block is mounted in one direction, the other plumber block is mounted in the other direction, which means that the offsetting in the holes of the plumber block makes them mount at different heights and cock the whole unit over. 
the drawing doesn't show any offset in how the tapped holes are drilled but I'll bet my back teeth that because this is a cheap import the quality process in the manufacturing has missed a trick. Right, I fixed that by flipping this one over so that it's got the same hand as the one on this side. It does mean the bearing has moved out that way slightly, so it's got slightly less purchase on the shaft. But short of rebuilding it, that's how it has to be. The sprocket is now vertical or within 0.2 of a degree or a millimetre of it which I can take out through adjustment and in the bolts. So I'm quite happy with that. Move on to the next problem. Okay, the engine's in. The top mounts of the engine are pretty solid. I've had to run a tube forward to the space frame on the right-hand side, the driver's right-hand side, on the left hand side it hooks into a substantial uh, frame member the rear is on a cross member made of 50 mil box steel i've drilled it out to take out maybe 200 grams of weight and there should be plenty of beam strength left in the vertical direction Unfortunate news is that the top run of the chain fouls the diagonal at that point, so I'll have to notch it out, which is a pain really. The space frame is now fully welded. This is just a walk around of where things are at the moment there's more fabrication to come but this is a good place to tie this video off the focus now will go on the suspension mounts suspension arms and at the front the front suspension setup which you can see at the moment is clamped just to get the rough position of the arms, the torsion tubes, the steering rack, etc. And although this area is a little messy, it does look like everything will fit in the space allowed. That's good news. There's plenty of room for the driver, although the driver will have a very close relationship with the engine and the chain and will require chain guards and isolation with a firewall. I'm rather pleased that I got a cross member under the engine so the chassis now is fully triangulated in all facets. So that's where we're at. I'll sign off the video at this point.